This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Don't let your kids watch it! Hey there, Artie! Let's go. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday! The fireworks I heard before noon were probably to announce the opening of the festival. Who puts fireworks out in the daytime besides Binky? <laughs> and the weather certainly wasn't festival weather. It was cloudy. The television forecast was calling for possible downpours starting this evening and lasting until around midnight. But as long as it wasn't raining at the moment, the festival would go on. The festival had to open, or it wouldn't begin. The Furade Shrine Grounds were probably decorated beautifully for the big performance that only happened once a year. That literally looks the same as it always does. Many paper lanterns were hung up, all in the auspicious colors of red and white. No, they're not! If it's a visual novel, just show us the visuals! You don't have to describe the visuals that aren't there! <laughs> the sound of electric motors at the stalls. Or maybe this is just his imagination. The voices of kids running around. Their happy families watching them, smiling. Today was the festival of Watanagashi. Was everyone already partaking in the festivities? What about Satoko? Okay, he's just imagining this. Never mind, I'm stupid. Had she forgotten her days of suffering for just a few moments? While smiling that brilliant smile she hadn't in, for, in so long? It has to be childish since Satoko's a little child calling her brother how she did probably as a toddler. Okay. I, I get that. That... That would probably be something, if I was localizing it, I would change, and that would probably be something where it's like, This guy did a terrible job of localizing the game! What was he smoking? <laughs> I'd be like, well, sorry, I just, if I thought... Oh! <laughs> Automod flagged a message. I don't, I don't know about Automod, man. It might still think, like, eh, he's a family friendly channel, and it's like... Yes, but no. I try to be family-friendly, but I don't really play family-friendly stuff, so... Also, um, I don't really... As long as you're not posting spoilers, or, like, just being a jerk, I don't really care what people post to here, but... Yeah, I don't mind, it's weird. It's just kind of... <laughs> I don't even know how to deal with it. It's like a toddler tra starting to talk for the first time, trying to call you dad, but comes up with Dada. Yeah, I, okay, fair enough. But at the same time, once you're 12 years old, if you're still calling your dad Dada or Daddy, I feel like that's kind of cringy. Maybe that's an unpopular opinion. This would probably be the longest day of my life. It would be the day I would remember vividly for as long as I lived. I told my parents I'd go to the festival this evening and lounged around during the early afternoon. We may have lived under the same roof, but they couldn't help being surprised by the deviation from how I usually spent my time. Glancing at my parents out of the corner of my eye, I went to the front door. How are you going to call the guy if your parents are here? Also, are your parents not going to the festival? They're just like, oh no, this is mystery movie night. It's time for us to watch every single Agatha Christie movie all in one go. <laughs> Burr, it's the best night of the year! <laughs> Remember when the good old fan sub times the Death Note did, didn't... I... No, I don't. I don't watch anime. At all. I tied my shoes just a little tighter than normal. As if to express the firmness of my resolve in those knots. When I decided to murder Satoko's uncle, I was in such a state of excitement I almost went crazy. No, that's fine. That's fine. Don't don't spoil. And when I was planning out the act of a murder, which went directly against all the morals fostered in me thus far, I was in such a state of calm I almost thought I had lost my emotions. And then, yesterday, when I learned Satoshi had made the exactly the same phone call as me, I didn't know how to describe the muddled feelings I had then. And now, entering today. Right now, I lacked all the emotions I'd possessed until now. To make a simple analogy, it was the kind of feeling you might get right after you wake up, when you're still half asleep and you don't feel anything very clearly. I had no anger towards this man for the violence he'd committed against Satoko, nor did I feel sadness towards or sympathize with her. I felt no discontent towards my friends, who had just waited and watched, never reaching out to her with any help, and no nervousness or fear towards the day that had finally come. Yes. Right now, you could say I was in the best possible condition for carrying out a murder. He's just, he's just in psychopath mode. Great! <laughs> Kids are cringy. Exactly. It's fair. But also, I don't like cringe comedy, so... When it came down to it, I would probably need to let my violent emotions take control. But right up until that moment, I would be like an insect. I would slowly, surely, and silently move towards my one objective. And then when I had my prey, I'd act like a bullet. There was no emotion in that just the creeping mindset insects possessed. That sort of sh uh, sneaking feeling that was just the best. I would kill Satoko's uncle like he was a worm. 
I had to laugh a little at thinking that way. Thinking like an insect. Tug. I tightened my laces one more time and walked out the door. I brought the shovel out the front storeroom. I would need it to dig the man's grave. The shovel was a convenient one made for camping. If I twisted it like so and split it into three, I could easily hide it in my bag. I twisted the shovel and dismantled it. And even though I'd done it countless times before, I had trouble for some reason. Like I was suddenly clumsy now. I knew why. It wasn't because I was nervous. My weak-willed self deep within me was hesitant. I knew that the act of dismantling this shovel was the first step I'd take to becoming a murderer. <coughs> <laughs> the last twist was conspicuously difficult, but it finally submitted before the strength of my determination. The area around Satoko's house was outside my circle of activity. But even just riding my bike in the middle of the day like this might seem suspicious to an observant person. Don't kill him too fast, Keiji. <laughs> he can't do anything fast. Well, yeah, that's true. He has to monologue for ages and then scream a whole bunch and then be like, I could do this in 1,500 seconds! <laughs> and then uh, probably screw something up. And then Ren is going to be like, KG, I surprised you by like trying to get you to go to the festival. Oh my gosh, you killed that guy! <laughs> I definitely want to avoid meeting and talking to someone I knew. With that in mind, I chose the route to my destination carefully. I didn't mind going the long way around. With how long this day would be, I could never be too careful after all. Still, I was fortunate enough to not run across anybody on my way to the planned site of the crime. I wasn't superstitious at this point, but it was a good omen. The place I would dig the hole was in this grove, a little further into the woods. I was worried I might not make it to the same place as before, since there were no signs to guide me, but I arrived there smoothly and as expected. I took another look around. Not even a hint of human presence. The air was a little bit damp, but it was comfortable in the cool shade of the trees. I took the disassembled shovel out of my bag and began skillfully putting it together. Then, I stuck the tip of the shovel into a soft-looking patch of ground and pushed on it with my foot. Do we need all this detail? Why can't we just be a cat dug the grave? Time to kill him. <laughs> the shovel would split into the earth if I put some strength into the foot. The act of doing so seemed awfully like the point of no return, and it made me hesitate. I was just digging a hole with a shovel, but it made me gulp hard. Calm down, Keiji Maibara. Let's do a countdown. Get it done on the count of three, okay? All right. One, two. Oh, man. I couldn't do it on the countdown, despite it having sticking in the shovel into the ground, and I had to count down five or six times. Damn it. I'm just digging a hole. This is pathetic. The 1500 seconds monologue is iconic. <laughs> it's iconic for me, but for a different reason. I'm just like, stop constantly saying 1500 seconds! This is ridiculous. <laughs> As I thought that, I put strength into my heel like I was stepping on something unpleasant, and splish came the sharp noise. That's not a sharp noise. <coughs> I know, it's like, we're the horror monster now. It was only soft at the beginning. Roots and stones quickly got in my way, informing me just how hard it was to dig a hole big enough for a person. No decent person would ever come here anyway. Maybe it would be enough to cover him up with some dirt. Every time a naive thought like that crept into my mind, I bit down on it with my teeth and dug even harder. I've dug enough now. I could hide him like this. Every time I thought that, I would go down into the hole, grow disappointed at how shallow it was, and return to digging. The thin layer of sweat on my brow eventually formed into drops and fell to the ground. My back was in even worse shape. My damp shirt adhered to my skin, and it felt so disgusting. The things I couldn't stand the most were the mosquitoes. Amen! Maybe they were attracted by the scent of my sweat. The black and white striped mosquitoes would cling to me whenever I let my guard down. It was hot. It was disgusting. I was sticky. I was itchy. All those uncomfortable feelings surged through me in waves. I hadn't yelled at anyone. It was me talking to myself, me telling myself something. Imagine if the uncle is just walking by at this time and he's just like, What the heck are you? Why are you digging a hole? <laughs> Whoops, didn't finish digging the hole first. Why was I feeling this way and digging a hole all the way out here? What benefit would digging this hole give me? What harm would there be in not digging the hole at all? Wait, in the first place, who ordered me to dig? 
When I thought it over, maybe ever since grade school, or even before that, my whole life had only been me doing whatever people told me to. I didn't mean it was somehow constrained, living a life just based on the commands of others. And I didn't mean I was too lazy to find my own road in life. Metaphorically speaking, yes, it was like a road. Oh, he's getting philosophical now, because he's not browsing YouTube. I'd never been particularly physically fit. I didn't hit puberty very early, and all my classmates and I got in a line, I'd usually be on the shorter end. My scores in tight jump rope competitions and marathons were the very picture of average. He was, wait, he's run marathons? What the heck? And it wasn't like the captains of the dodgeball teams would have a passionate rock-paper-scissors contest to see which would get me. During those kindergarten and grade school years, it felt like someone was only worth how fast they grew and how fit they were. Looking back on it now, it was really uncomfortable for me. The thing that turned all that around was just a few words from my mother. Geichi, anata zuku ni hairu ki wa nai? Gakkou no benkyou ga wakaru yo ni natte tadoshiku naru wa yo. Ooh, he's an academic, not a jock, just like me. Except, I don't do weird monologues about 1,500 seconds and a thousand other things. The very first test I took at the cram school was kind of like a game. It was a lot of fun. It wasn't like the tests with the exact same problems dozens of times in a row. Every question had a picture to it, almost like one of those puzzle books that came with manga magazines. If my studies at school had been like this, it would have been way more fun. Several days later, I went to the cram school again with my mother and the enrollment paperwork. Mom and the person at the cram school had a really long, heated discussion, so I accidentally dozed off and missed most of what they said, but I clearly remember one point. Mom had made a loud groan, surprised at something. えっと、61って平均点が61です。関心の知能検査でも非凡な数字が出ています。Well, Kip, my son is smart. There must be some mistake. Thanks, Mom! Uh, Keiichi's mom, good grades don't always correlate to how smart you are. <laughs> we learned that the road, school, the road system at school sucks. Who would have thought? Maibara-kun wa imi wo motanai mondai ni hijou ni yowai no desu. Yeah, see, some people, like, I'm a guy where I can get, like, oh, it's all these theoretical math problems where it's literally pure numbers, and I'm like, this is great, I can do that. It's where, it's, ironically, it's where you get the practical word problems that, <laughs> that I was, where I was less interested. Okay, well that's not good. If you if you threw up from the alcohol, you should probably stop drinking the alcohol for the night. That's what I would recommend. Yeah, so many people just if you can put the math in practical terms, they do a lot better. Yeah, it was a... <laughs> okay, okay. Exactly. I can't always tell sarcasm in text form. その通りです。例えば、正6面体の展開図を書けと言われて混乱するケイチ君も、サイコロを切り開いたらどんな形になるという風に聞けば、見事に答えられるのです。Then the person from the cram school page, uh, uh, from the cram school page, from the cram school showed her a page from one of the exams I took. It was a paper with questions about construction. Construction questions were unusual, so they were really cool, weren't they? <laughs> That's also me! <laughs> yeah, I love math too. Oh, that's what she said. Yeah, that's あなたどこかの本の雑誌の付録か何かで二十面体のサイコロを作ったことがあったの。Dice only went from one to six. 
I'd never even considered the, uh, before this test that there were dice with more than six sides. So it was fun to imagine what type of a shape that a die that went up to 20 would have. If I had a die like that, I could win at snakes and ladders against anyone! So I immediately wanted to make it. Finally, I entered cram school. There were only four students in the class they put me in, which was called Select. It was the highest class, and some of my classmates were in lower classes. And when I remembered how much better they had done at things like dodgeball and the 50 meter sprint, I felt happiness well up within me for the first time. Even if I wasn't as good at them physically, I triumphed over them in other ways. Exactly. Don't judge a fish by its ability to fly, or it'll spend its whole life thinking it's an idiot. Albert Einstein, probably. It was fun at first. The more I did, the more I was praised. My teachers at school suddenly started pampering me, and it felt good. My parents were satisfied, too. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. And I enjoyed seeing them satisfied. The more I listened to my parents' commands, the more fun things got. <laughs> that did happen, didn't it? I grinned dryly in self-deprecation. Because, well, my studious lifestyle didn't end up lasting very long. It was only at the beginning I enjoyed learning more and more. I gradually got along less with my friends. My classes were behind what I was learning in cram school, and I eventually stopped respecting the teachers, given that they could put me to sleep with their lectures. Oh, is this why he's constantly sleeping in class? Because he's like, I already know this stuff, just let me graduate. <laughs> or is he just being lazy? <laughs> Pure logic is much easier to understand than irrational humans. Yes, very true. Psychology is important, but man, I have a hard time understanding how other people think it sometimes. <laughs> hmm. Maybe, or maybe he just needs to be put, put stuff in practical terms. I feel, I feel like we try to la label everything nowadays, so he might just be like, hey, he, maybe he thinks a little differently. <laughs> well, I was a disagreeable sort who bragged a lot about how much I knew, and the ways of the world wouldn't let me remain in that state of ecstasy forever. I would do as I, would tol I was told, then I'd go above and beyond their expectations, and then they praised me. I was happy for that, and the cycle repeated itself like the wheels on a bike. I thought moving forward like that was how life worked, like a bicycle. When I moved to Hinamizawa, I realized just how inadequate it was. Some things happened, and we started saying how moving and getting a change in atmosphere would be nice. Then my father, he had a place that he liked, and he'd gone a few times to draw the nature. He started saying that he wanted to bring his atelier there. With me in blanket amazement, they decided to move to Hinamizawa. And after that, I... I met them, didn't I? Happy friends. Oh, It is a flashback! First day after transferring there. You can't wait... You can't... First look into Keiji's backstory. You can't wait for just the rest of four years or so. Yeah, it's gonna be great time! It's gonna be great in 2028. The first day after transferring here. I went to the classroom with the teacher. I thought it would seem pitiful for her to bring me in there, so I placed my hand on the door before she could, slammed it open, and set foot into the room. Clatter. The thrilling, powerful way I opened that door was none other than my own determination to try doing my life over again. <laughs> Prepare to be amazed! And then, within seconds, that determination took a hard counter to the face. A blackboard eraser fell on me. Plus, there was a huge rock inside. It was a supremely painful trap someone had set up. Oh, that's a terrible way to get off on the, that foot. <laughs> oh, come on! Satoko was already beating me right in from the first day I transferred. That frightened me. I was bewildered. The class was surprised, too. I wasn't just surprised that the students in the class were all in different grades and there were different genders. It was because the room felt completely different from the schools I knew. And as I spent more time with them, my surprise continued to grow. This fresh sense of surprise had never left my body even to this day. Every day was a fresh new surprise. I had never a single boring day since coming here. The days were lively, spent with other club members. We played Old Maid with cards with scratches on the back to cheat. We let all our passions grow wild during our games. That Old Maid with the cheating cards was terrible. <laughs> You always needed something practical for math for me. Yeah, again, it depends on what, like, what, if you're like, I don't know if it's left brain versus right brain, but if, generally speaking, the math people can be like, oh yeah, you can just give me the numbers, I'm good. And that's where school, like, pretty much only teaches that. And the other people just need more guidance, essentially. <laughs> uh, 
We all went out as regular participants in tournaments about to the toy store in town, and many, many more things. Recently during those times, there was the bento competition. It was then. That's when I saw an unexpected side to Satoko. Thinking back on it, I only ate dinner with her two nights. Hehe, <laughs> it's me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, folks, but I got... Oh, wait, never mind. The chat disappeared. I don't even need to move it. <sighs> Gotta get those thumbnails somehow, right? It was this such sweet, gentle time spent, and it warmed my heart remembering it even now. I realized that Satoko was pretending to be stubborn and firm, and how brave she was. Part of her heart always waiting for her Nini to come home. And I vowed to become her Nini. And then everything went wrong! Satoko may have been nagging and overly critical, but she knew how to take care of someone. But though it might have seemed like she was taking the lead, it was actually her way of depending upon another person. Even if Satoshi and Satoko's lives as siblings were confined by their uncle and his wife, they were still warm, sunny days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, this, this is a good point. When did those sunny days all go wrong? What mistake was made? Lamenting tragedies of the past would do no good, and I told myself that so many times, but I did anyway. Keiji, isn't that why you chose your own path? To take back that life? Nobody ordered you to do this. You decided it on your own. You don't desire anyone's praise for this. You thought it all through yourself. You'll carve it out by yourself. And you'll do it now! This wasn't a path I could see very far okay, down. Okay, I believe you. <laughs> Not like the road parents or society could offer. I I said that weird. Not like the road parents or society could offer. It was a narrow path, dark and utterly distressing. One for which the next step would always be shrouded in darkness. But that disheartening path would keep going on forever. It was an unlimited path, and there was nowhere I couldn't travel. The kind of path only available to those able to imagine where they wanted to go. Don't be ashamed of breaking from the brightly lit paved path. In fact, feel proud that you found your very own path to walk. Don't be proud of committing murder, actually, and I hadn't discarded that paved road either. Once I achieved my goal, I would go back to that bright road, and then I'd spend those average sunny days at my leisure. <laughs> Crush. When I next realized it, the hole had grown so deep I couldn't believe it. Did I... Dig all this by myself? Dig it up, up, oh, dig it. I put my shovel in the bottom of the hole. I would drag the body here, throw it into the hole, and cover it up with dirt. Even if it took me some time to camouflage it by putting plants on top, it would all go much more easily than digging this hole, hole had. That's true, if he's digging in like a heavily vegetated area like this, yeah, it's a lot easier to cover the dirt with grass and stuff. It might still look unnatural, but it'll be harder to find. <laughs> Excellent. I glanced at my watch. It was almost evening, and I hadn't realized it. I may not have felt the time passing, but digging a hole this deep must have taken quite a lot of time. I took a seat on a slanted rock nearby and wiped the sweat from my brow. <sighs> now, once it got a little darker, I'd go get the metal bat I hid in the schoolyard. Then I'd make the call to lure him out. Where are you going to call him from? Payphone? And then, I'd do it. The number of things I needed to do to reach that moment were dwindling. I felt that moment closing in on me much more keenly than I did the passage of time. I didn't have any hesitation, but I still felt that. A contradiction. At every step in the process, I had a few chances to hesitate, to turn back, to let myself lose my nerve. Having to endure those million temptations and wait for when the time was right was an indescribably slow and painful torture. I would thought myself acting all weak because of that, but I stopped midway, though, or midway through. This was okay. It was fine. I could detest the abnormal act of homicide as much as I wanted, and it didn't matter. I wasn't going to be a cutthroat killer after today. I would pass through this strange day and go back into the world I was in before. Y you think you're just going to forget about this and go back to normal? Nope! Your favorite Higurashi OST is Festival. Interesting. <laughs> I, I don't remember that one, or maybe I haven't heard it yet. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I just set Automod to be like, hey, if you swear in chat, automatically flag it. Mainly because I don't. If I'm playing like Super Mario Galaxy, I don't want people swearing like sailors. <laughs> May maybe. 
Honestly, it <laughs> I probably don't, but also this game has like 800 million soundtracks. Like there there's the original, there's the console, there's the Steam, there's the demo, there's the two different remakes and the anime has its own set of soundtracks too. Uh, if I fell to the level of a psychopath who brought thought of nothing but killing, I wouldn't be able to go back to my old life. So this was fine with me. I think the guilt's going to eat away at you. I didn't have to feel ashamed at hesitating to kill. Because I was human. It was so funny to me that I'd be the bearer of Oyashiro-sama's curse at the same time I was aware I was human. I exhaled lightly and stood. I concealed my presence and sharpened my senses in all directions to search for anyone around me but me. <sighs> okay. Let's go. One step at a time, I would walk my own path. A path no one had forced me to walk. The cicadas made an annoying fuss. They're like, don't do it, don't do it. Their chorus covered up the suspicious noise of me breaking twigs underfoot. And their chorus filled the air, uh, filled the path far ahead of me, letting me know I would be alone for some time. The cicadas blessed the path I walked, encouraging me with every last ounce of strength they had. Yeah, the cicadas love killing. That's why it's called When the Cicadas Cry. The sky was far above. In not even an hour, the veil of night would draw near and the sky would be tinted with dusk. By that time, the Higarashi would let me hear their chorus in place of the cicadas. When that happened, would everything be over with? Would everything have ended? I said something along those lines when I left Satoko's fate up to a public agency. But this time was different. I would do it. I would carry it out. I would ended. I'll kill Mufasa. It would all be over very soon. Everything would end. Yes, when the Higarashi cried. Alright, that's the name of the game. That was a cool transition. <laughs> Are you sure this is the only third chapter? It feels like the final chapter.